Well, it is among the most controversial rulings by the U.S. Supreme Court in many, many years. The Citizens United decision grants independent groups and corporations the same First Amendment rights private citizens have. It has had a wide-ranging effect on political campaigns and contributions. To tell us how and why, we're joined by Professor Jenny Burke Condon, and she is from Seton Hall Law School. Good morning to you. Good morning. Why is this so controversial? I've heard so much about this, and some people are very much for it, some are against it. But the essence of it is it's a very controversial ruling. Absolutely, for a number of reasons. Critics of the decision charged that the court went out of its way to really reinterpret First Amendment law in a way to protect the interests of corporations and uh, came up with a really novel interpretation that said that corporations have the same right to uh, engage in political spending as the rights of individuals and individual speech. And the concern from critics was that this would allow unprecedented amounts of money to enter uh, the, the election system through huge corporations like ExxonMobil, Bank of America, who would be able to spend um, millions and effectively drown out the voices of individuals. And that's exactly what happened for the most part in its past presidential election, am I right? There, there is some evidence of that. And I think the, the results of last week's election, the first presidential election in the post Citizen United era, still there's a, there's a lot of data to be uh, analyzed. But the, uh, one thing we do know is that um, more money was spent in this presidential election than ever before, and more money was spent by outside groups. Uh, there was a, a study and analysis uh, earlier this week by a progressive group, U.S. Public Interest Research Group, that suggested for every uh, 1.4 million individual donors that um, donated to the campaign, it only required 61 um, individual wealthy donors to pack to, to meet that same amount of spending. And, and that group and others point to figures like that and suggest that the inequality in election spending and the risk of individual voters being drowned out by wealthy interests um, was proved to be true this election well, cycle. If, if this is so controversial, Congress could always formulate a law and change it any which way they want with the president's approval, of course. Is it that they don't want to? Do they see there's, there's a, an unlimited, possibly an unlimited stream of contra con uh, campaign contributions in the future? I think uh, Congress it will certainly be discussing this issue in, in the weeks and months and Seriously years ahead. Seriously discussing it or giving it lip service? I, I think that there are a number of uh, Republican um, candidates in this election cycle who had previously expressed support for the Citizen United decision who were now on the receiving end of very uh, uh, aggressive outside spending by super PACs. And, and th a lot of those candidates have questioned whether Citizen United is the right uh, policy for our country. I think th those individuals and other um, leaders in Congress are going to uh, question whether we should have some reforms. My, my guess is that they're going to be more in the way of greater disclosure requirements to try to increase transparency mm -hmm. so that we know more about these outside groups that are spending so much in elections. In your opinion, as a law professor, was this the Supreme Court overstepping uh, its boundaries in a lot of people perceive this to be them legislating as opposed to interpreting. I think that is the right criticism of the court's decision. You know, for, for the majority of the court, which has uh, historically uh, espoused the principle and the importance of judicial restraint, there's lots of evidence that the court went out of its way and to, to protect the rights of corporations and also did so in violation or without regard for its own uh, recent precedent, which is you know a principle that the court normally holds in very high regard, but in this case um, disregarded. And I think that that is a criticism there's a lot that has been said about that and mm -hmm. a lot more that can be said about it in the, the years to come. What you know of the law, what troubles you, the, or, or this ruling, what troubles you the most about this? It's really um, the, the fact that there, the court's principle would allow for uh, virtually no regulation of corporations. They mm -hmm. can spend whatever, they, um, whatever they, they have and whatever they want and whenever they want in an election and, and during election cycles. And I, I think uh, that's problematic, particularly when Congress is in the best position to determine whether or not reasonable regulations are required and are consistent um, you know, with, with the Constitution. Let's try to get into the minds of the justices. Why do you think, in your words at least, that they went out of their way to protect the rights of corporations in this particular ruling? Why would they do that? You know, I, 
I think a, m a number of members of the court um, have a, a, a legitimate uh, view of the First Amendment that differs from those members of the court that were in the dissent. And uh, I, I don't uh, think that it was entirely outcome determinative that, th that they wanted to protect corporations, but there's room for that criticism as well, given um, what a radical departure it was from our election law and the way in which the court uh, reached its decision. We're running out of time just to discuss this one last chance. Do you think there's a legitimate chance that Congress, more than reform, might change this law or th this ruling dramatically based on what has happened? M my um, guess is that the, the Republicans in control of the House recognize that Republicans are still advantaged by the Citizen United decision and the, the huge amounts of money that can enter the election uh, through uh, under the auspices of this decision. And for that reason, I'm very skeptical that Republicans in Congress will actually want to change. Okay, Professor Jenny Burke-Condon from Seton Hall Law School, we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, us. pleasure Appreciate to be here. It.